Well, it's November 11th, 2016, and here we are back in the greenhouse. I know I haven't updated in a while. I've been busy. Um, things are taking off, and uh, very green in here this year, which feels nice. Plants are doing well. Things are growing. And uh, the main purpose of this video today is to talk to you about uh, automation. So what is the formula to automate, regulate, and data log everything in a greenhouse? It's a simple formula. Pie. <laughs> Raspberry Pi. Uh, anyway, uh, so this is still in development and uh, I'm going to continue to develop this. It's going to be a while. I don't know exactly how long, but it's going to be a while before I get it all complete. But at the moment, it looks a little hacked, a little bit <laughs> wires hanging out and all that. But um, that's just the nature of developing this sort of stuff. Uh, you don't want to go finalizing your connectors and then find out you have an issue. You have to take everything back apart. So uh, I just basically came out to a breakout board so I could break the pins out uh, with a little more space in between them so I can get at them and count to them and follow through. And um, I'm running, uh, currently have uh, 22 thermal sensors and then... Uh, two uh, Adafruit DHT22 uh, thermal and humidity sensors, uh, one outside, one inside. Um, all these cables are just Ethernet cables. You'll notice I'm only using a couple of the wire strands on each, so there's room to expand to many, many, many more sensors. Um, and uh, so we'll go back over here. I'll show you the uh, these are the Adafruit DHT22. This is a humidity and thermal sensor for both. Um, those actually currently aren't hooked up and working at the moment because I have uh, some, some code issues to clean up. Um, been pretty busy working on this stuff the last uh, week or so. Uh, and then uh, a couple nights ago I just added these six new sensors in this bed because I wanted to monitor soil temperature inside the greenhouse and the soil. Um, soil temperature is a critical factor in plant growth and speed and biological reaction rate including bacteria and fungi. I could go on all day about that, but my point really is about the Raspberry Pi for now. So I'll just show you what one of these little uh, thermal probes looks like, um, and I'll, uh, it's like a DSB 1820 or something like that. I'll uh, try and put a link in the description or something for you. Anyway, so uh, those are logging temperature. Uh, the system takes a snapshot every single minute of every day. So every day there's 1,440. I just added this console in here um, so that while I'm working on the Raspberry Pi stuff and writing new Python code and adjusting sensors and all, I could actually see everything heads up on the display because before that I was logging in from my computer in the house and uh, SSHing in. And that works great for developing code and that sort of thing. But when you start hooking up physical sensors and you want to test them and then you want to be able to unhook them and stuff, it, it got to be a hassle last season when I was running back and forth between the greenhouse and uh, the house. So I, I figured, I mean, the Raspberry Pi has the HDMI output and uh, a keyboard input and a mouse input. So why not just plug it in, have a monitor? And uh, now I have a computer so I can actually watch uh, YouTube videos, listen to music in the greenhouse, and I can actually look at the live data chart and see exactly what the temperatures are right here. So uh, just real quick, uh, you can see uh, it gives a date and time, and then uh, each sensor has its own spot, you know, east high, east low, west high, west low. So those sensors are like here, and one down there. One up here, one down here, so on and so forth. Also, uh, in the two thermal mass tanks, there are two sensors each, um, a high sensor and a low sensor. So we get the high temperature and low temperature. We average the two of those, and then we calculate for BTUs based on the number of gallons of water in the tank and the number of degrees change. Um, so two different tanks with two different sensors. And also there's a stove sensor. And you'll notice that's not connected directly to the stove. I think these sensors are good to like 257 Celsius. So I can't really, uh, I can't really put uh, the sensor directly to the stove. 
but either way when we look at the charts and the stove temperatures later you'll see that that tells me you know whether the stove is burning well or not um, I'll take you outside quick and show you the outside temperature sensor and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about the charts um, that we're looking at and then uh, after that I'll go inside and I'll, uh, I'll do some screenshot stuff and uh, explain things a little bit more so here we are outside it's like 50 out but it's been crazy windy all day and I'll try to speak up so you can hear me so this is uh, the outside sensor you notice I have a, a white housing on it this is to keep the sun off of the sensor so we're getting air temperature or at least as much as we can rather than uh, rather than the temperature of the sensor in the sun which would be entirely different and then back over there amongst all that brush that I got to clean up is uh, another temperature humidity sensor so we'll have outside humidity and inside humidity and temperature and then we can compare them um, while I'm out here I guess I might as well show you where this white stake is is uh, where the soil probes are we have uh, four different uh, sensors in here one at three inches one at six inches one at nine inches and one at 12 inches depth in the soil and so those are monitoring uh, outside soil temperatures and um, it would be really interesting to see after uh, a season or two uh, you know how the soil temperatures change and it's actually been interesting studying it just uh, just um, just in the short time that I've had it like we get a cold night um, and like you'll see the, the three inch depth soil temperature sensor shift fairly quickly with it and the 12 inch depth one will shift like 12 or 14 or 16 hours behind it that'll catch up and like get cold then as the sun comes out and everything else warms up so uh really interesting obviously it's what you'd expect but it's interesting to see it uh in a live chart um anyway we'll go back inside we'll go over the chart a little bit in the greenhouse and then we'll take in uh, some screenshots so here we are back in the sunny toasty warm greenhouse Wow, does that feel a lot better? And uh, let's see, average temperature in the greenhouse right now is 69 degrees. Um, you can see the difference, like even east high versus east low. That's the other end. And then this end is west high versus west low, right? Um, whoops, we refreshed again. It refreshes every minute because it updates once a minute. Um, where was that? We were back over, way over here. Uh, yeah, obviously humidity, like I said, the humidity sensors are not working currently, but uh, they will be once I get the code issue straightened out. Stove temperature you can see is very low right now. I'll, uh, I'll page down a ways and take you back to, uh, yeah, back when the stove was running, like say, even at 5.51 this morning, my last stoke was like two something. And even at almost 6 in the morning, the stove was 12, still 112 degrees. And you'll notice that there were about 45,000 BTUs in storage in the two thermal mass tanks, which are those two water tanks I showed you with the sensors in them. And each tank has its own individual also. Let me scroll back up here so you can see the top labeling in the chart, right? So we have uh, outside temperature 1, outside temperature 2. Two ties with the humidity sensor, of course. That's that low one I showed you on the ground. This is the high one on the pole, so we're 49 degrees right now. Um, delta mass is uh, the difference in, between the thermal masses and the greenhouse, average of the thermal masses in the greenhouse. Delta mass out is the same for outside. Those are your 3 inch, 6 inch, 9 inch, and 12 inch soil sensors. This is BTU totals and storage. Like right now, there's about 30. 1000 BTUs in storage and then it shows each tank individually and the upper and lower temperature for each tank and we'll scroll across um, you know same thing with tank 2 upper and lower and then we have the two air inlet sensors right here that's where the fresh air inlet for the greenhouse is so we know exactly what the temperature of the air coming in is um, you never want to go below 50 degrees on your air inlet because you'll start to shock your plants a little bit. All right, and then those six soil probes I showed you right near the, uh, right near the, um, the doorway there before, those six in the, in the soil. All right, 
So uh, I think that pretty much covers the basics of it. Um, don't be afraid to ask, uh, ask questions in the comment section below and uh, um, there'll be a second part to this video which you'll see, well, you'll see it right now. All right, so when we're in the greenhouse, I promised you that I would bring in and show you a little more about the uh, SQL dashboards and the database and uh, a little bit more about the system, uh, the Raspberry Pi 2 system that's logging data in the greenhouse and eventually we'll run all the remote controls and uh, other ventilation and other control procedures. Um, this AutoCAD map is not really up to date. Uh, I haven't finished uh, drawing in all the sensors. Uh, ignore this one. That's a spare. Uh, these, all these little red points here though are where sensors are located, so one in the top of the tank, one in the bottom of the tank, on each tank, and that's what I meant by high-low, not high temperature, low temperature, just FYI. One behind the stove, got one west high, west low, east high, east low, there's the six in the bed in here, there's one outside, and two air inlet sensors. Uh, the air inlets also are not shown on this drawing. Uh, I apologize for that. Now we'll switch over to uh, the greenhouse chart that we were looking at before. And uh, I kind of explained all the different sensor things to you. Uh, I started the stove up a little while ago. You notice the stove is at 156 degrees now. You can see how fast that's climbed between 521 and 532. It's gone from 137 to 156. So uh, I know this data all in these charts, unless you know what the sensors are and where they should be and that sort of thing, it's really hard to understand. But that's why everything goes into the charts like so. So this is showing everything including date, time, stove, uh, east high and low, west high and low, thermal mass, outside temperature, average greenhouse temperature, and I have humidity temperature in and out in there right now. Uh, these four are the sensors I previously mentioned are not working. Uh, Coil 1, 2, 3, and 4, those are the uh, outside soil temperatures at 3, 6, 9, and 12 uh, inches in the ground. Uh, delta T, air in 1 and air in 2, the two different air inlets. And uh, and you can see that we're looking at two days of data here, okay? Uh, so 1,440 minutes in a day, uh, so there's 2,880 uh, fields in a two-day cycle. So first of all, Let's just uh, roll this down to the last day or so. You'll notice it's fairly responsive. It's fairly quick. And then uh, we'll full screen this so we get a little bit better visual on the scale. And you can see in the daytime when the, uh, when those end, uh, when the end door is open how much the temperature fluctuates based on wind and sun and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can pretty much guarantee that this is like a sunny point in here sunny, clouds, sunny, etc. So you can really get a good idea of what's going on here. This top red line is the stove temperature um, and so you can see how when the stove temperature climbs out how the east, east and west high and low sensors climb accordingly as does average greenhouse temperature and all. This line down here on the bottom is the delta T. That's the difference between the inside and the outside. Um, you can see at times, like uh, last night, at say a little after 3 in the morning, the stove was at full throttle, it was running almost 180 degrees, and the Delta T was uh, 38 degrees. So it's 38 degrees difference between outside and inside temperature. This here is outside temperature, so there you go. Uh, and it was uh, 41.9 degrees at that time. So uh, the really cool thing about this, this chart can be very confusing, but what we can do is we can go back and take out whatever we want to take out of this. For example, let's take these outside uh, soil sensors off and uh, maybe take the air intakes off. And you can basically adjust the chart with a simple SQL query statement 
and uh, add or remove fields from your chart just like that and of course you can go back as long as you want or you can look at specific sets of data depending on how you sort it there you go see there's the updated version and uh, that's still got quite a bit of confusing information on it so let's drop uh, let's drop the high and low sensors and just look at like average and uh, and some basic info here there you go so now you have a better idea where things are at right that's the thermal mass you'll note that that's fairly steady um, this is must be average greenhouse temperature yeah you'll see that that kind of fluctuates in accordance with the stove and uh, and as does the delta T and you can see uh, how the outside temperature kind of falls and rises that's outside yeah so uh, so that's just one chart out of many um, I obviously have quite a few charts going here let's go look at I think this one is the one with the new inside soil sensors yeah <coughs> all right so right now we're looking at uh, the average greenhouse temperature and soil sensors one through six inside the greenhouse as well as the outside temperature the difference in outside temperature the soil temperatures that are outside um, let's just clean this up a bit uh, so it's not so confusing I'm pretty used to all this data but I'm sure most people are probably quite confused by all of that uh, also you'll notice that uh, like these just started up here that's because those soil sensors were installed at that time so uh, they basically came online at about 9 15 p.m. last night and uh, you can see that uh, throughout the daytime uh, the inside soil temperatures do rise a little bit um, I'm going to be doing some design work to uh, make those temperatures come up a little bit more and stay up a little bit more. Um, but that's that's the beauty of this. You can really analyze what's actually going on and then make your adjustments accordingly. Um, anyway, so uh, that's basically that. Uh, we'll look at the BTU chart. This is always a really interesting one for me. You'll notice uh, this chart actually lists backwards from the rest of them so this is the most recent time now and this is the oldest you'll notice 1436 is almost 1440 so that would be 1436 log sessions ago or 1436 minutes ago uh, anyway uh, there's there's uh, BTU total and uh, the two different BTU storage tanks here so you see uh, tank 1 and tank 2 and then the combined total store of BTUs and you see like last night we got up to uh, well around 46,000 BTUs in storage so uh, this makes it really easy to manage and sort data and you can add and remove uh, data fields as you like or wish and that's really handy is a great way to see what's up going. and coming I'll be adding uh, uh, light sensors for lumens and probably spectral sensors as well to determine uh, infrared ultraviolet all that kind of stuff um, pH sensors in the soil um, I mean the list really just goes on and on and on um, soil moisture content all sorts of stuff but uh, it's uh, it's really uh, a great way to collect and manage data and it's relatively inexpensive I mean a Raspberry Pi is $35 and you know the sensors are two bucks a piece now that said, I got a lot of time in writing code and learning curve and all that sort of stuff, but uh, it's certainly well worthwhile because uh, I'll really be able to improve my um, improve my uh, <coughs> efficiency in design uh, on the next go round. So uh, it's been a fun experiment, and uh, I thank you for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network. And with that, I bid you a wonderful day.